right, hello, I see a few people trickling in. We're just gonna hold tight for about another minute or two as people begin to enter, but welcome. As you actually, as you join, I'm seeing a few names pop up here. Do you don't mind typing your name in the chat if you want to, no pressure, um, and maybe where you're from? Because I know we have people from across across the country here, all sorts of universities. Would love to to know where you where you're at right now. Right. Just give it another, eh, maybe just a minute. I'm sure people will, jo will be joining as we come as well. Just for those of you that are here, a few housekeeping uh, items. If you do so uh, throughout the next um, little while, we have got Tim here who's going to be presenting from Monash. If you do have any questions, it would be awesome if you could type those in the chat here so that we can all see them. Um, I know there's a and a function as well, and you there's you can definitely use that if you'd like, um, but I would encourage you to type them into the chat, and that way the other people who are, are tuning in can also see the questions, and we can make sure to get them answered. Oh, I see someone who's just said, you think the chat might be disabled. I'm going to look into that. If there is any trouble with the chat, I'll look into that just momentarily. Um, then do type, your, do type your questions in the Q&A just for the time being, but. It worked okay for me, but I'm a panelist, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, funny. Okay, I'm going to look into that maybe once we get started. Um, but Tim, I think we may as well go ahead. It's just about three minutes after, and um, I see we've got just a small handful here. So hopefully a few more people will, will tune in. But welcome, everyone. Thanks for being here. I know that you're at a variety of different stages. Some of you are just new to the world of looking at physio in Australia, and some of you are a little bit further along. So you're, you know, you ha may have an application started or even submitted um, or even an offer to, to study physio. So this is, I think we're excited to be here. Um, I know I am, and I think I'm sure you are too, Tim. So um, just for those of you who are absolutely brand new, Quick introduction, we're um, Oztruck. I work with Oztruck, my name is Anna. We are a Canadian company. We work very closely with a handful of Australian universities. Of course, Monash um, being one that we, we love to work with um, across many different programs. And so we're your kind of your go-to here in Canada with in terms of answering questions, your applications, um, and kind of everything from, from A to Oz as our a semi cheesy saying goes. So um, if you do have any questions again throughout, type those in the chat if you're able, if not into the Q&A. Um, and if there's any questions left unanswered at the end, feel free to shoot an email across to our admissions team. And again, we can connect you with, uh, with Tim here and the Monash team uh, with, with further inquiries and, and also you know students, alumni, that type of thing. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to introduce Tim, who is the Manager of Student Recruitment in Medicine, Nursing and Health Sciences at Monash. So uh, Tim, over to you. Thanks so much, Anna, for that introduction. Okay, uh, welcome everybody. Glad you could join us. Um, today I'll be giving a sort of a brief overview of uh, the Doctor of Physiotherapy course. And um, yeah, as, I, as Anna said, feel free to pop questions into the chat if that's working. Um, you can write down your questions or at the end, um, happy for you to ask questions to me directly um, through, the, through the video. So um, I'm going to get started and share my screen. 
So I've actually been working at Monash for about 10 years, um, which is longer than this uh, Doctor of Physio course has been going on. So we started this uh, about three years back, I think three or four years, COVID time, you sort of lose track of time a bit, um, but it was just before COVID. And it's been proved very popular, especially with our Canadian students. Okay, so um, as Anna said, my name's Tim Gorn. I am the recruitment manager for the student recruitment manager for the Faculty of Medicine, Nursing and Health Sciences, which is a, a, a large faculty of around 14,000 students, of which over 10,000 are domestic Australian students and about 4,000 are international students. Overall, if anyone here doesn't really know much about Monash University, Monash University uh, was named after Sir John Monash, a very famous uh, Australian who added a lot to the Australian's life through his uh, service, both as a, a general in the First World War and then as an engineer and through a lot of civil service and uh, projects that he ran and helped, in, especially in the state of Victoria. Uh, so we were founded in 1958. Uh, we have 10 different faculties. Uh, where the medicine, nursing, health sciences is one of the largest faculties at the university. And uh, we have campuses in different locations in, across Victoria. Um, so including Clayton Peninsula, Parkville, but we also have uh, campuses in Malaysia. Uh, we have a study center in Italy um, and also a, a small postgraduate campus in China, in Suzhou, and also a new campus we've just opened up in Indonesia. So we, we sort of have a global footprint as well. Um, and we have around between 70,000 to 80,000 students in total at Monash. So we're a very big university. We're Australia's largest university. Oh, sorry. Hold on. Okay, um, we rank very well in a lot of our rankings as well. So um, if you want to check out some of our rankings, I'll, I'll tell you some of our more specific rankings for our um, medicine program. But uh, certainly in pharmacy, we rank number one in the world. Uh, I think education, the Faculty of Education uh, just got ranked first in Australia uh, for their programs. Um, and just the latest uh world rankings that came out ranked as 44 in the world uh, overall, which is very good, which was second behind Melbourne University. So some of you might be thinking, oh, you'd like to come to study in Australia, and you might be thinking about, too, about is physiotherapy the right choice? What about health in general? Is Am I on the right track um, in terms of making the choices I'm making? Well. Um, I've got some figures here. These are Australian employment projections from five years to 2024 um, done by the Australian Government Department of Education, Skills and Employment. And this shows the growth in um, projected growth in these demand for these areas. So physiotherapists was projected to grow by 24.6%. So one of the highest growth areas um, in Australia. Uh, so you can see by that there are opportunities for physiotherapists. There is demand there for physiotherapists in Australia, as I'm sure there is in Canada, because at the moment, uh, globally, there's a shortage of healthcare professionals. So there is huge demand. And a lot of these um, qualifications are transferable into other countries as well. However, do check your local uh, qualification frameworks and, and regulations before you make that decision. And just to give you an idea of graduate salaries, so these are the salaries you can sort of expect to be able to get as a fresh graduate. Um, so um, if we look at rehabilitation, both physiotherapy and occupational therapy, you're looking at around 67,000 Australian dollars per year as a graduate salary, um, which is pretty good, not that much under what a doctor would make.
So I assume everyone's here is interested in the doctor of physiotherapy. At Monash, we have two physiotherapy courses. So the Bachelor of Physiotherapy and the Doctor of Physiotherapy. If there's anyone interested in the Bachelor of Physiotherapy, please let me know. The Bachelor of Physiotherapy is a four-year degree. Um, you can apply to the Bachelor of Physiotherapy after completing another bachelor degree somewhere else. That is fine. We have, don't have a problem with that. But most graduates, I think, are interested in the uh, Doctor of Physiotherapy course. Um, just because it's got a nice title <laughs> and it, you know, it's it's a shorter duration as well. It's only three years full time. Okay, so the basic entry requirements for this course are you need a distinction average. So in Australia, distinction average is, is 70%. Um, I'm not sure, depending on which institution you come from, it may be um, around 70% in Canada. I'm not sure, but Austrec, uh, Anna from Austrec would be able to help you with that. Um, you also need to have relevant study. So our academics feel that for the Doctor of Physiotherapy, the perfect graduates are our Bachelor of Biomedical Science students. Uh, so our Bachelor of Biomedical Science students study a very rich uh, biomedical science course, which includes studies in um, anatomy, physiology, uh, pharmacology, um, biochemistry, lots of different areas that are relevant to the study of physiotherapy. And so for that for that reason, this course is a perfect sort of pathway into the Doctor of Physiotherapy. Um, so the prerequisite subjects are human physiology, human anatomy, and studies in biostatistics. Now, you need to have had a course that contains at least two of those. If you are missing one of them, you can pick up one as a sort of an online unit or um, just as a single unit enrollment um, before you get an offer. So we won't give you an offer if you don't have all three of those um, uh, prerequisite subjects. So you need to have all three and you need to have met all our requirements in terms of um, entry into the course. Uh, the course um, the course is run at our Peninsula campus. Our Peninsula campus is, is a very health-focused campus, so we also uh, teach paramedicine there. We teach occupational therapy, uh, nursing, and midwifery down at the Peninsula campus. So there's a lot of health-related facilities and health students down there. And the Peninsula, as you might guess, <laughs> it's close to the beach. Um, it's 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 situated just on the outskirts of Melbourne and it's a very beautiful area and especially if you and it's a very nice campus with a beautiful environment um, and a lot of state-of-the-art facilities and that's where they'll be teaching so the, and this course only has one intake per year um, and that is in July uh, so currently for the doctor of physiotherapy each year we uh, have around 20 places for international students. Um, so we don't have a lot of places. So I do encourage you, if you are interested in this course and you haven't applied yet, or you're sort of maybe in your final year, please apply early um, and, you know, get, get, your, get your application in so that we can assess it and we can get an offer to you uh, in a timely fashion. Sometimes you might have to go on a waiting list um, if there's no places available. So if you've made an application, you haven't got an offer yet, it might be that just all places are currently um, being offered. Uh, but sometimes students do drop out in that process. So just because it's full at one point of time in the year doesn't mean it's going to be full until uh, enrollment. So sometimes we have students who accept offers and then later um, because of different circumstances may uh, choose not to take up that offer. So just keep that in mind as well uh, when you're applying. So, but if you can apply early is my uh, recommendation for the course. Okay. Now the Doctor of Physiotherapy has a integrated curriculum. So as you learn about one thing, you're also learning it in conjunction with other aspects of being a physiotherapist. Um, and we also, because it's a doctorate degree, the Doctor of Physiotherapy, we focus on development of leadership, education, advocacy skills. Um, 
in addition to those physiotherapy skills. Um, and being a physiotherapist, you know, going out into the world, it's, yes, it's more than just um, applying your physio skills. Um, it's about being um, taking on leadership roles, you know, especially a lot of physiotherapists will start up their own clinics. And how do you manage that clinic? How do you manage people? Um, how do you sort of advocate for good health within the community? And how do you be a leader in that field? And we're very interested in producing people who are not just practitioners, but leaders as well. When you start the course, there's around 18 contact hours per week. Um, plus, of course, there's additional self-study time. Um, so a, a lot of students will take a part-time job while they are doing the physiotherapy course. It's quite common for our students, international students to, in Australia to have a part-time job. And you can work up to 20 hours or probably, I mean, the rules have changed during COVID. We actually scrapped the limit on the number of hours, but I think that that will come back and then there will be around about 20 hours per week, a maximum you can work. Uh, you don't want to work too much because uh, failing a unit will cost you a lot of money. So it's a matter about getting that balance right between um, having a little bit of part-time work to bring in some pocket money so you can go to the movies and go out to dinner, but also making sure you're focused on your studies and you're able to keep up with that, with your uh, study requirements. Um, Campus-based content and early work integrated learning placements. So that means you get exposure to physiotherapy businesses. And you'll see later that one of the, the final units you do is related to actually the business of running a physiotherapy clinic. Yeah, and you share facilities with the Bachelor of Physiotherapy students as well, who we have a larger cohort of students coming in. Um, in terms of accommodation on the Peninsula campus, <coughs> there is accommodation available on the Peninsula campus. Again, um, it's not unlimited. There are limited places. So um, if you get your offer and you're looking for accommodation on campus, I would apply for that early, put in an application. You can find out more information about that on the Monash Residential Services or Mrs. MRS. Yeah, so if you can just remember Mrs. MRS for Monash Residential Services, that's the um, that's where you need to go to to find out about accommodation on campus. There's also accommodation off campus as well. Um, sorry. Okay, and here is the course map of what you will study. Um, so you can see here in first year, you've got a foundations of physiotherapy and musculoskeletal physiotherapy. Um, and then, so you're building up knowledge and then you're going through into different areas, including neurological, uh, cardiorespiratory. And then as you get further into the course, you're doing more of that clinical placement and clinical practice. And finally finishing with um, the research project um, and business and management and health systems and leadership education and advocacy. And this is an example of what <clears throat> one week of a week in year one in semester one might look like in terms of your classes. So a mix of lectures, tutorials, and practical classes, as you would expect with a course like this. So generally courses like physiotherapy, um, nursing, uh, medicine, they generally have a few more contact hours than sometimes a, a business course might have because um, you have to have the practical classes as well as the, the theory um, and uh, tutorials. So before I showed you the, the, the map about what you would study, so foundation studies in terms of so you're coming from a background where you've studied some anatomy, you've studied some physiology, you might have done a bachelor degree in biomedical science or done a science degree with 
<clears throat> with studies in biomedical sciences or, or anatomy and physiology. So what we do in that first year is we assume that you have this basic knowledge, but then what you need to do is apply that knowledge in terms of physiotherapy practice and understanding how what you've learned in terms of human biology and physiology, how that then applies into physiotherapy practice and how that's developing. So that's part of those <clears throat> foundation studies that you would learn. In addition to this, um, you're going to be picking up some clinical skills. So all of our um, labs at, at Peninsula Campus are designed to provide the opportunity and provide all the equipment that you would use in either a hospital setting or a clinical setting or uh, aged care setting, wherever you're working. We would have all the equipment there you need to use. And so then it's about applying that, um, using that equipment, learning how to work with that equipment. So those clinical skills classes are traditionally quite small. I mean, it's quite a small cohort for the Doctor of Physiotherapy course anyway. Um, so you might work in groups of say, uh, so you might have a class of around 20 students in one of the labs. Uh, and then you might break up into groups of four or five. Uh, you will be given a, um, a task to complete. So, for example, it might be um, bandaging, a, you know, something quite basic like bandaging a patient or putting a patient's arm in a sling or um, making a diagnosis or it could be, could be a range of different activities. And the academic, the professor will tell you what they want you to do. We'll then go break up into groups and then you'll actually try doing that. So either you'll try, you'll practice that, maybe it might be with a mannequin. It might be like role play where one of you is playing the patient and the others are, are bandaging that patient. And you'll put those, those skills that you've been taught into practice. And the lecturer will come around and um, provide you with um, some guidance, some assistance. If you're having trouble, they might say, <clears throat> oh, have you tried doing it this way? or a good tip is you can do it like this, or they might throw something, a, a spanner into the work, so, as, so to speak, to say, okay, so this is all going fine, but what if in this situation, what would you do? Um, so it's about putting in those skills into practice and building confidence in your ability to use those skills in a safe sort of setting before we send you out to the general public. And this is what I'm talking about here. Um, actually, I'm just going to excuse myself for one second. I've got a dry throat and I've got to have a glass of water beside me. I'm just going to get a glass of water, but um, feel free to pop questions into the uh, chat or the Q&A box um, while I'm gone for one second. Well, Tim is gone, actually. I just want to throw a note into here. So there is a, a current student at Monash, Canadian student Neha, who is hoping to be here to join tonight. She's uh, busy this week in, in clinic and uh, with classes, but she has very kindly offered to share her email and to answer any questions that any of you have about Australia, Monash, physiotherapy. So I'm just going to throw her email in the chat. Um, at the bottom there and uh, do free, feel free to copy and paste that and reach out to her she's a great resource a Canadian who is really enjoying her time at Monash so there is her email and Tim you're back perfect I'm back yes and, and refreshed and hydrated it's fantastic <laughs> Rook, rookie mistake not to have a glass of water next to you when you're presenting <laughs> but, all right thanks for that Anna um so yeah so as you can see here, there's a small class working together. And um, as I mentioned before, you know, often you integrate the learning. So, you know, you, you're looking at applied anatomy and biomechanics. Um, you're also thinking about um, other aspects. So you might be treating the injury or thinking about direct treatment for the injury, but you might also be thinking about uh, the long-term health of your patient, the rehabilitation, and also, um, other aspects that might be going on 
within your patient's life and how in terms of psychological uh, aspects and how you can help your patient holistically through that process or through that injury. So once you have uh, developed uh, your range of skills, uh, you've you've applied your foundation knowledge into the practice of physiotherapy, you've been in the lab, you've been practicing your clinical skills, you feel pretty competent in what you're doing. So then we send you out um, and the placements will be a range of placements. So physiotherapists work in a range of healthcare settings. And so you will be sent to a similar range of healthcare settings. So uh, Monash has a number of healthcare hospitals we work with. This one's called the Monash Medical Center. It's actually not owned by Monash University. It was just that Sir John Monash was so famous that he had both a university and a hospital named after him. But the Monash Medical Center and Monash University are very close, or the Clayton campus is. And we do, uh, a lot of our students do do placements there. But we also have Peninsula Health, we work closely with, which is a series of hospitals and uh, clinics. So students will be placed there as well. Um, on the Clayton campus, we are opening uh, the uh, next week's the first walkthrough. And by next uh, year, beginning of next year, they'll have patients in the Victorian Heart Hospital. Um, we also teach our Master of Public Health out of the Alfred Hospital, which is the number one casualty hospital in Victoria. So there are chances that you might be placed in one of these hospitals, and it could be like in a paediatrics unit, it could be in a in a, you know, a emergency unit, it could be in different areas or rehab uh, section. So you'll also get uh, placed, you, you don't do your placement all in one place, all in one location. So you'll do different placements and they'll be in different locations and you'll have to apply different school, skill sets to different types of um, patients that come through. So one might also be in an aged care center. There's big demand for physiotherapists working in aged care. Um, due to hip fractures, mobility issues, um, arthritis and other um, conditions like this. So, so yeah, so you might, you might be working in an aged care centre. Also, there's a lot of private physiotherapy clinics in Australia, as I'm sure there are in Canada, and you might be placed in a, in a private uh, physiotherapy clinic as well uh, to uh, utilise your skills that you have learned, put them into practice, get feedback, and get familiar with what it's like to be a physiotherapist. Okay, and that brings us towards the, you know, the final part of the course, which is a research project. So uh, students will undertake a, a research project as part of their course, uh, and that uh, then allows them if later they want to, after graduating and then going into physiotherapy practice, that, that piques their interest in research and into um, how they can improve uh, physiotherapy skills or how they can better identify uh, issues or be an advocate for uh, improving the health of communities. Uh, that, that gives you that ground um, grounding in how to, how to undertake research um, and you'll be guided by the academics at Monash in doing that. Um, so you can see the, the girl here on the screen, she's developed a poster on her practice there, um, highlighting some of the things that she's been doing in physiotherapy practice. Uh, some of you might be wondering about accreditation. I did briefly mention accreditation before. So uh, in Australia, the situation is that if you start a new course um, that you uh, cannot get full accreditation until you've actually had some graduates from that course, which sounds a bit strange, but that's the way it works in Australia. Um, so full accreditation is expected in 2023. So we've got um, accreditation. So it's not like a, we've got like a temporary accreditation at the, or provisional accreditation, that's a correct term at the moment, which means we're accredited, um, but they wanna see, make sure that our graduates are up to scratch. But that hasn't been an issue for Monash with a lot of our courses. We Every time we bring in a new course or a different course, it hasn't been an issue. 
The Bachelor of Physiotherapy has been running for a number of years. It's just that we opened up the Doctor of Physiotherapy uh, as a fairly recent sort of course. And uh, our graduates are just going into the workplace now. Um, and they'll, and then we will, hopefully we'll be able to get that full accreditation early in 2023. I mentioned before that uh, students can go overseas and get accreditation. For example, Hong Kong is looking for they have a shortage of physiotherapists in Hong Kong currently. I know in Canada, especially in Vancouver, you have a large population of people from Hong Kong. Um, um, and there might be some Canadian students with Hong Kong backgrounds who might think that that might be a good opportunity. Uh, just sometimes the only issue I've noted with some of our graduates who have gone overseas, say to, say to Hong Kong, I, I, I don't know so much about Canada, but sometimes the regulation board will say, oh, no, you don't have quite enough hours. Um, but then it's just a matter of because there's a lot of hours in the course of placement and practice, sometimes it's a matter of just doing a little bit more volunteer work um, just to get up those extra hours uh, to tick that final box. But it hasn't been an issue, uh, a big issue in Hong Kong. Um, and I'd imagine that uh, Anna from Austrek will be able to give you advice about getting registration in Canada, if you're interested. Okay, so why choose Monash? If you haven't made a decision, you're still weighing up whether you'd like to come to Monash or not. Um, these are the 2022 QS subject rankings. So you can see in areas such as anatomy and physiology, we're ranked 29th. I mentioned before that in pharmacy, we're ranked number one in the world. Uh, medicine we're ranked 38 and psychology ranked 49. There isn't an individual ranking for physiotherapy yet. I'm sure we would do well if there was one, um, but um, you can see that generally in our rankings, we, we perform very well as a top 50 sort of world university. So um, that's the end of my formal presentation part. Um, but I know a lot of you will have questions and want to ask questions. Um, as I said, if you are interested in this course, I encourage you to apply sooner rather than later um, because it is very popular. Um, I can see there are some comments or questions in the chat. Um, uh, just connecting with Neha, that's good. Um, yes, oh, and I see you've answered all those ones and just pop that question in. So now if people do have any questions or anything you would like to ask, uh, feel free to ask me. And it doesn't just have to be about physiotherapy. It can be about Monash in general. It can be about physiotherapy. It can be about life in Australia. It can be about uh, travel or any questions I haven't answered. Uh, feel free to, to ask. You can either unmute or you can just pop it in the chat. Q&A. There's one in the Q&A. So. Do you offer accommodations for students with disabilities, physical or mental? So the answer to that is yes, we do. Um, I'm not an expert on that, but I know that uh, Monash is very supportive of all students and we do try to take care of students regardless of their, um, whether they have mental or physical disabilities. Uh, there is one thing I'd mentioned that though, if you are play, applying for the doctor of physiotherapy and you do have a, a medical condition, uh, you it's best to raise that when you're applying so that the School of Physiotherapy can do an assessment about suitability to practice. Um, just like all healthcare professionals, there are certain uh, physical requirements you need to have and health requirements. For example, we've had students who have applied who might have had hepatitis uh, and then that poses a health risk to patients. Uh, we've had students who have applied who have had uh, other disabilities, and we just do an assessment and let you know um, whether that's still whether you're fit for practice or whether uh, we will make some accommodations in terms of um, the way you undertake the course. But uh, Monash Residential Services, I'm sure, would have apartments that are suitable for people with disabilities. Yes. 
but what the specific ones are, I think it'd probably be best to, as I said before, reach out to MRS, Monash Residential Services, and find out what those apartments are or what those units are which you can access. Okay, were there any other questions? Even Anna, did you have any questions that I... <laughs> Yeah, no, I actually do have a question for you, Tim. And yeah. so I'm wondering if you can maybe speak a little bit more to the like the DPT program at Monash. Because I know for here in Canada, it's a two-year MPT. I know there's a few options in Australia with that two-year program. Um, but there, are there any kind of highlight points that you think stand out about doing the doctor physio uh, program? Um, well, I think, I mean, the, the good part is that that third year, um, if you remember what the third year sort of curriculum is, um, that opportunity to undertake that sort of a, a decent sort of research project, but also looking at the business side and, and the applications of that. Also that just that extra clinical uh, placement opportunities in terms of, you know, spreading it out over three years rather than, I know that some of our students who come in to do our master degrees, because we've got a master of occupational therapy practice and a master of nursing practice, and I know some of the feedback from those students is that, that it is a very intensive course because you're undertaking like nearly a thousand hours of placement within that course. So the, the Monash Doctor of Physiotherapy has a thousand hours, the bachelor has a thousand hours, but the bachelor degree is spread over four years. Um, if we were to put that thousand hours over two years, um, bringing students in who have had no background in physiotherapy, the three years gives you that little bit of extra time um, to build that confidence and skills and also a, a broader um, group of skills that we have um, and a more holistic sort of education in physiotherapy. So, you know, for example, if you do want to go straight out and set up your own physiotherapy clinic, well, how do you do that, that business side of that? So that work integrated learning aspect um, I think is important because it, it does give you that insight into what it's like to actually run, you know, because it's, a lot of health students might be particularly good at biology and physiology and chemistry and that, but they may not have that much business experience or much understanding of what it's like to actually work in a physiotherapy, um, you know, a clinic or, or to run one or to be a, a leader in those fields or to employ people. So I think it gives you greater insight into that and, and um, good opportunities uh, for that and three years. So yeah, like if you're comparing a two-year course with a three-year course, I know it's the extra expense, but for some people, I think it they would prefer to have that more comprehensive sort of uh, degree. And of course, it's a very nice title, Doctor of Physiotherapy. <laughs> And uh, Tim, thank you very much. And hi, Anna, and hi, everyone. Sorry that uh, I came on uh, late, <laughs> couldn't get uh, onto the panel. Um, um, added to, to, to what Tim has just said, uh, I think that there has been a lot of correspondence between, between us and, and, um, and Jamie about the, um, the hours, the practical hours that uh, the, 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 the program has, uh, has uh, provided to our students. So Dr. Salt, the, uh, the, the DPT coordinator, um, explained very clearly that actually in within the programs about more than you know if the students accumulate um, and then make the sheet of their hours of, 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 of practice, it would be about more than 1200 um, hours and that would need the Canadian uh, credit uh, accreditation. Very simple. Students just accumulate the hours, make the sheet, the hour sheet or the time sheet, and the uh, doctor so would um, you know sign it, and that would be um, included in 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 the students' uh, process for whatever documentations and thing like that for their uh, accreditation later on. Plus that we will have uh, uh, next year, uh, the end of next year, the end of 2023, we will have uh, the first Canadian, I think, um, um, PDT um, graduate. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you guys can ask any questions about um, about you know wanting to work in Australia first or straight going back to Canada. Thank you. 
Thanks, Wah. That's great. Um, I also, um, I see there's a question in there about uh, practice. Can you work in Australia? Um, and the answer to that is yes. You, um, you qualify for the post-study work visa um, after you graduate. And then um, with the post-study work visa, that allows you to uh, apply for jobs in Australia. As I said, at the moment, there's a shortage of most or just about every healthcare worker. Um, generally speaking, uh, you know, if you're seeking positions, that there's probably more demand in regional settings. Uh, when I say regional, people might think, oh, you know, in the outback, but it's, uh, Victoria is a very small state in Australia compared to some of the other states. Um, and the furthest away from Melbourne city is Mildura, which is about four hours. So a lot of regional areas are just one or two hours outside of Melbourne, um, but there is big demand there for healthcare professionals. Um, if you, um, someone asked, and I think the second part of that question was, um, can you become a, a citizen in Australia after, uh, is there a process to become a citizen? Well, you can do what my wife did. She just married an Australian. That was very easy. Um, <laughs> That's probably the most straightforward way, white poire. <laughs> Me too. I, I was an international student before. Well, actually, an <laughs> physio, physio, physiotherapist is so much, yeah. much needed. We are short of, of, of those. And that is why, you know, as a team said before, that is why that if you are interested in this, uh, in, in, in this kind of like, a, you know, uh, line of work, you'd better apply very, very early on uh, because of the, the, the courses are capped and fill up so, so quickly. Mm, they do. It does fill up very quickly. Um, going back to that, uh, in terms of staying in Australia and working, as I said, you can apply for the post-study work visa. Um, you know, there are opportunities to stay in Australia. Some, If you work in a regional area, certainly a lot of hospitals might be interested in sponsoring you to stay on beyond the time of your end of your post-study uh, post work visa. So, yes, there are opportunities to stay in Australia. As I said, there are opportunities to go to Hong Kong and work at the moment, and I'm sure there's lots of opportunities in Canada. So it's it's really up to you, but I, you know, this, this is not our field, and I, I encourage you to go and do your own research and find out the information because you don't want to... There's a lot of bad information out there as well, um, and go talk to someone who actually has an understanding, like talk to Oztrek and that... Um, about what opportunities there are, because um, as I said, there's a lot of incorrect information out there as well. So do your research is my advice. I agree with Tim. Um, the post study work is uh, is really there, you know, according to the to to the government policy. So students, international students studying in Australia, if they take the two years program, it's all right, two years, you see, so they are eligible to stay at least for. Uh, for two years, post study work. But if they if they are uh, if they study in the um, areas of demands, say for example, like a physio the the therapy, um, then it could be extended for four years post study work. So this actually was just released. This this information was just released um, maybe a month ago, um, and I we hope that it it, it will be confirmed uh, soon. So actually, the time um, that the post study work time for for the student for students, especially in the uh, demand areas, uh, is 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 really really um, not an issue at all. And um, we we are not team agree. Uh, team is right that we are not uh, we are cost university representatives, but not the immigration experts. And then we are not kind of like a, you know a talking a lot about it. However, we are, I can say that, you know, uh, physiotherapy is, the, is one of the demands area. And then that is also one of the um, kind of like areas that a lot of students want to get into because of the, the peer priority. 
I will just to jump in there just for a second, tell you um, who's here. We do, so in terms of physio students that we're seeing on our end graduating out of physio programs in Australia, all of which are accredited uh, back in Canada, we're seeing quite a few students choose to stay on in Australia, at least for a time, a period of time to work, get some really nice experience, make some money. Um, and then some people stay. And then during that time, you can actually start the process of applying back to Canada. So I put in the chat there, there's a, there is an application process. It's CAPR is the regular uh, CAPR regulatory body in Canada. Um, there's just a bit of paperwork to submit. And then there's a written and a practical exam very achievable back in Canada if that's your goal um, but you have options some people come straight back some people stay in Australia at work start submitting their documentation through to CAPR um, for their exams and then come back or like mentioned stay on in Australia get PR and, and so forth so you definitely have options hmm. and someone I noticed someone asked again uh, about how many places we offer um, I say it's around 20 it does change from year to year uh, usually it's not going to change greatly. Unfortunately, we we have limited places due to the fact that we have to a have students in labs. We want to provide a quality education, so we don't take in thousands of students. We wouldn't have the labs or the clinical placements to send them. So every student has to have a hospital placement, a clinical placement, uh, a thousand hours of those placements. So uh, for us, you know, we organise those placements. Uh, we arrange them for you. Um, and so we we can't take in too many students each year. So it's a small cohort, which is good, I think. Uh, it's also good in terms of job opportunities, because you know in Australia there's not uh, lots and lots of people graduating with physiotherapy degrees. It's a very small number each year, um, and at the moment it's not keeping pace with the number of people who are retiring or leaving the profession. So And also in Australia we have an ageing population, and with an ageing population you get more demand for rehabilitation experts whether they're physiotherapists or occupational therapists so there is that growing demand I'm sure you have an aging population in Canada too yes that's a worldwide phenomenon <laughs> so uh yeah so the demand for physiotherapists uh is quite great um so the, yeah but I think the hardest bit about doing physio is perhaps just first securing a place in the course um, but if you're interested in apply early and have all your everything ticked off. Uh, the other thing I didn't mention is you do need to meet our English language requirements. Um, usually that's not an issue, but it, it's, it's IELTS 7 for Canadian students, just in case you might have just recently migrated to Canada or be an international student in Canada from another country. Yeah. So um, any other questions? Anna, is there anything else I haven't spoken about or you'd like more information about? Looks, I mean, you've covered a lot, Tim and Hua. Thank <laughs> you so much. Now, yeah, I'm just looking at the time. We're nearing the end here. Um, so if uh, just another minute or so, if anyone does have any other questions, but um, in the meantime, yeah, I want to thank you both for, uh, for being here, for organizing this and for sharing all this information. And also for the, those of you who came out this evening uh, or this afternoon, wherever you are for, for tuning in. I hope this was really informative and uh, getting you excited about Australia and Monash. So thank you. It's been good to be here and, and it's great that the, everyone's joined and uh, I'm sure we actually invited some students along today but I think this week is an assessment week and so <laughs> Neha and, and a lot of the other students were like oh no not this week uh, they've got their heads down doing assessment so um, yes but hopefully we'll be able to get some students later in the year or early next year to speak to you when we do other webinars with you guys and uh, we do occasionally visit uh, one of our colleagues Justin was just in Canada um, doing some events with Austrek so um, next year hopefully we'll be able to get it to Canada again and see some of you face to face so yeah or you just come to us and, and come and say hello <laughs> it's probably a nicer option especially in the winter <laughs> yes yeah it's been very rainy here we're having a La Nina um, for the third year in a row so we've had some floods and rainy weather but we're all looking forward to summer uh, just around the corner. Yeah, so today today is, is cooler. It's about uh, 15 or 16 degrees, I think, today, centigrade. But yesterday was about 20, but very wet. 
Yeah. I'll take that 20 degrees any day. <laughs> We're starting to get cold <laughs> here again. So <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah, we, now we, we are much warmer than Canada. Yes, that's for sure. So, <laughs> and um, uh, this is a very good section, Anna. And I think in, in, in the question and answer, some students ask how many Canadian students we accept. So basically we um, accept as many as possible. At the moment, still a small cohort. But I think as a gym, uh, as a team said that, you know, the program is, is capped. It's only some, you know, very limited numbers of students can get in uh, because of the capacity. So, um, just we, we just encourage you to apply as early as possible within a year, actually. Right? Yeah, and, and we don't have any limits on Canadians applying. Like <laughs> no, if, the, if, the, if the top 20 people who apply who meet all the requirements are Canadians, we let 20 Canadians in. It doesn't usually happen like that. We get people from uh, many different nations like Canada, Singapore, uh, Hong Kong. Um, you know, India, across the world, the Middle East. Um, but probably it's with Canadians, it's probably the most popular nationality in terms of applying for the course. So there's probably more Canadians than other nationalities. Yeah. Which is interesting for the bachelor degree, actually get a lot of students from Hong Kong. And that's partly because of the huge demand in Hong Kong for physios. Um, yeah. Which I mentioned before. And actually, you know, so maybe Anna also, you know, spread the word out because of what the, for, for physiotherapy, Monash offered two uh, entries, yeah, two courses. One is a direct entry and the other one um, is, a, you know, the, the doctor of physiotherapy. So it's really convenient for students from anywhere, anywhere, just as long as they are interested in the job and as well as they uh, apply early and meet the entry requirements, as simple as that. Yeah, yeah, younger siblings out there, if you have younger siblings or whatnot, spread the word. I know a lot of Canadians don't know about the option to enter in directly from high school. So um, yeah, an amazing opportunity to do that if you know you want to go into physio. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, thanks to Anna today for hosting and thanks, Wa. Um, and thank you everyone for, for coming. I, I think it's been a terrific session. And uh, um, Anna, did you want to have any final words or, or a wrap up? Yeah, I just wanted to let everyone know that this we did record this session. So we will be sending out this recording afterwards in case you missed something or want to go back to something that Tim uh, Hua, or Hua mentioned during the, the session. And so keep an eye out uh, tomorrow for that follow up email. Um, and again, just thank you very much. Enjoy your day over in Australia and your evening here in Canada and, and hope to see some of you or all of you in person uh, in the beginning of the new year. I know Monash is going to be likely back in Canada for one of our uh, winter tours. So if you want to chat directly, I think that would be an awesome opportunity. So thank you, everyone. Thanks, Anna. Yeah, thank Bye, you everyone. very much. Thank you. And Anna, actually, John, uh, John will be in Canada in January. John uh, is kind of like a Monash rep uh, based in New York. And yes, and he's with us. Uh, Today, this section and the other section as well. Oh. Sorry, it's just my, yes. my daughter in the background there. <laughs> yeah, and John, okay. actually, John also uh, also a Monash alum. Amazing. Okay, well, great. Well, that yeah, yes. we'll see you in January. Absolutely, I look forward to meeting with you then. Okay, awesome. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna close this off and head over. I know that we've got a medicine session next. Yes. So yes. I'll, I'll get that started again soon. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.